Hey guys, it's DC here and today I want to talk to you about the demand in cybersecurity. <laughs> Before we get started, I want to do a quick shout out to my Patreons. There's uh, seven of you so far. Thank you so much for being Patreons. And uh, I told you I'd shout you out. Also, cheers to the uh, two people who have joined up a YouTube membership. I think it's like $1.50 or something to become a member. So thank you also for uh, doing that. I appreciate it a lot. Anyway, so talking about the demand in cybersecurity. And I wanted to talk about and I guess discuss uh, what has changed in the last year. I previously made a video about the demand in cybersecurity and to be honest, things have only gotten more hectic. When I made that video, I was talking about, you know, maybe the demand is going to drop down over the next year and it doesn't seem to have dropped at all. In fact, it, it seems to have increased. So for those of you who are new to the industry, I'm pretty sure you'll be excited to hear this, that the demand has actually increased for cybersecurity professionals. Even in this COVID era that we're in at the moment, it seems ever more prevalent, I guess, to say that there is more of a demand for cybersecurity roles. But at the same time, some of those roles have changed a little bit from what they were before and also the monetary value on each of those roles has also changed slightly. So for example, those entry level positions like the security analysts in SOC teams and security professionals who work at uh, MSPs, uh, those roles have sort of changed to be a little bit more of a broad topic. So it now seems to include things like network security and systems administration. They're all considered part of the analyst role as well as the cybersecurity uh, MSP role as well. They, they just seem to include everything now. So I guess they've probably, how the industry has changed is that they've cut out uh, little parts of the role, or given them to people with more experience or just completely changed the role where those people are now working as sysadmins, network engineers, network security engineers and a cybersecurity engineer doing you know reverse engineering and digital forensics type work as well but also doing that basic entry level work which um, usually involves a lot of log viewing and analysis so yeah it's interesting to see that things have actually increased in the cyber world and the money associated with those roles like i said before because it's now including sysadmin and network engineering things like that Sometimes you get paid more, sometimes you get paid less. It depends on where in the world you're going for these jobs and which organization you end up working for. Something that I've seen on the rise recently is people starting their own business, which is awesome. I myself am one of these people who have recently started my own business at Datasec and doing cybersecurity consultations and projects and managed IT support, all that sort of good stuff. The reason I did that though is because I already have all of the experience from before. So I thought now's probably as good a time as any to take the leap, I guess, and you know jump into starting my own business here. And it seems like a lot of other people have taken the same leap as I have, which is great. Great. It's good to see and it sort of, I guess, floods the market a little bit with those big players. So they now have a little bit of competition with the smaller guys like myself who only have like a two or three man team to compete with these larger organizations that have like 20, 30, maybe 100, 500 plus employees, maybe thousands of employees. It yeah, it depends roughly where in the world you are to how big your team is, but yeah. So I guess the majority of the people watching my videos are students and they're looking to get into cybersecurity straight out of school or university. And for you guys, the industry has changed a little bit. Those entry level positions, like I said before, have changed and the demand for them has changed slightly. All you need to keep in mind is that the job has changed even more than I thought it actually would. So just having cybersecurity skills getting into a cyber job is now not really enough. I'm glad that I had the foresight a year ago to say that people need to do a Linux plus, a security plus and a network plus or CCNA to get that overall knowledge of Linux uh, systems administration, networking with your CCNA and network plus and then the security side of things covered with your security plus. With those three certifications and some experience or a degree you should be able to still get a job fairly easily and that applies in the US and Australia and even the UK, which has actually seen some growth in demand over the last year. A lot of the uh, guys who were previously working in Europe that I've seen have then moved to cyber companies that have started up in the UK and they are making absolute bank. Like I'm talking a hundred thousand pounds a year plus, which is like in Australian money, that's, that's a lot. <laughs> 
<laughs> Whereas in the US, it sort of still sits around that 90 to 150,000 US dollar mark for not so much for entry level positions, but more like after a couple of years of experience type positions. But yeah, it's it's great to see that the demand is growing. I'm super excited to see where things go in one year's time from now. And you know, if things progress even more and uh, people go and get uh, how COVID will eventually, uh, I guess, change the industry for good. Uh, will people be more conscious to uh, maybe security risks, phishing scams, etc. Now that a lot of their staff, if not all of their staff, are working remotely. I think it's, it's a pretty interesting time to get into cybersecurity. And for those people who are sort of worried about uh, AI taking over, it's not going to happen just yet. So, you know... Don't stress too much about AI. I've talked about it in a few videos before, um, and basically that AI is only at the moment replacing those basic tasks that can be automated already. And it's just to make your life easier, basically. They still want that human interaction on these cyber jobs because you, you still do need to have a human element especially with these decision-making problems that come up. So uh, yeah, join the discussion, guys. Drop uh, some comments down below on how you think things are going to change in the next year, uh, what you've seen in your country where you work or where you are studying at the moment, how uh, things have changed in cybersecurity, how you think they're going to change. And yeah, let's, let's get a discussion going. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do give me a thumbs up, subscribe for more, and I'll see you on the next one. And again, thank you to those Patreons and YouTube members for uh, basically donating to my cause here to uh, give free learning and advice to uh, people in cybersecurity or wanting to get into cybersecurity. I do really appreciate it, so thank you.